Howdy lovelies, how are you all doing? Welcome back to Wobble Crafting, where we learn and grow and craft together. We're starting our new series, and it will be a short one this time around, as we have only a few weeks before it is Christmas. And I am wanting to make a Christmas journal of some sort. Now, it will not be a big journal with many signatures and things. We only have about four weeks to do that in. And... As you know, if you have followed me before, I like to start with my signatures before I actually do the cover. That way I can create the cover according to my needs. So if I want to add big bulky embellishments or ephemera in the album journal, you can then adjust the width of the spine so that you can um, stop the journal from making that crocodile mouth that is doing like this in the end. So if you adjust the spine, it can still lay flat with whatever closure you decide to add in the front. So if you want to have a lot of ephemera, add lots of photos and things that will add bulk to your journal, it is best to adjust that spine so that there is space. Can't be too thick, Otherwise, it will be too heavy for the cover to handle. So, let's get started. I have a set here. I did not print everything of her kit. It's from Louise Heinzel, um, a well-known paper crafter, mixed media artist. She is also a Tim Holtz maker. Now, I decided on her pack because I love the vintage feel. If you know me, you know I love to do vintage journals. Either shabby shake, vintage, complete vintage, butterflies, the whole vintage appeal with the coffee stained or tea dyed papers. And steampunk is another um, type of, of journal that I love to make. But on the other side of that pendulum is my very bright and bold journals that is almost overwhelmingly bright. That's how I operate between those two. So... Her kit, I did not print all the pages, like I said, I've done some on cardstock. It's a Christmas kit, you can find it on Etsy. I just want to add as well that for this journal, I'm also using some of DG and SVG designs, little labels and things, a few from others, as well as DG and SVG designs end papers. Now, the end papers that I use came from um, the Big Five kit. I made the African Safari journal not so long ago with those um, papers, their kits. In fact, I also used some of their other end papers that was coming from their clusters, their layered clusters. Um, and there might be a few extras that I printed that I found on my, my laptop. So the paper that I'm going to use, and I will quickly just flip through it so that you can see, these ones I will be cutting out to use as little embellishments and on pockets and things like that. I printed paper on the other side, Christmassy feels, vintagey with a bit of beige. It's like a burgundy red. It's not a post office red. So I'll just put that to one side and it's going to fall. So let me move this. And then these ones also like postcard type like things that I will be using to include. So I printed some papers on the other side. This is also from her kit. I just love their faces. The graphics are amazing so the tiny ones can be tiny journal cards books you can make a strip of it you can do all these things whatever you want to also more papers this as well this is from dg and svg designs so there's more same here same type of thing also a paper from dg this is from somebody else that i found on etsy i cannot remember the name i did buy it legally so it's not an issue i got the whole set and i have printed some for myself on um small no, on an A4, but on smaller size to use in journaling and making ephemera and stuff. I also printed some of Louise's German ledger paper for myself to use. This is also a kit of hers, and I will probably be incorporating some of this in here. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at the writing, the typical German writing. It is amazing. Um, and this I still need to print on the back so that it is double-sided. So that I might include in here, might use some pieces of it. So here I've got some of DG's paper, DG and SVG designs. I printed it on cardstock, also not printed on the other side. This you will see, I've used that one in one of the sets. This is from a previous project. Here are those other musical sheets that I spoke about just now. 
and I love them. It's just amazing. There's that one that I printed. So I've got all these sheets. There I printed them on A5. This is A6 size. Easy to incorporate in a collage piece or so. And I haven't printed the full A4s yet, but there's that one in A5. So for those that are not familiar with it, A5 is half of an A4 sheet. And I believe that an A4 is a bit taller but narrower than your eight and a half by 11 and a whatever. I can't even remember the sizes of that, but Yes, yours is a bit wider and shorter on the portrait side. Oh, I, oh, that's that one I was going to say. I did print it, but this one is part of Louise's. So all these papers might or might not be included in the journal. Part of it might or might not be included in the journal. So that music, I think the music notes, can't read it. I don't even know what language it is, but it's still pretty. And that is part of her kit. And this is still Digi and SVG designs, part of a kit. This is Digi. So the backside is all Digi and SVG designs. And the Christmassy part of it is Louise's set. Isn't it just gorgeous? This is also some of their end papers. This one, more. I just printed some of them. I, I love using their things. More of the Santas. There we go. Printed that vintage feel anyway. That's why I included that. This has got a double layout. It just helps if you want to turn it over and it's already got the double sided print to it. Yes, this I did not select the proper um, setting to print it full page. I did show in one of my previous journals that it was printing right to the edge. So you don't have this. This can easily be camouflage, inking the edge. I can show you with that. Maybe jumping the gun. If you carry on, you can add lace, maybe a a border, it depends what you want to do. So that can easily be camouflaged or you can just trim it down, especially since I don't know the size of the journal and that I can only determine once we are ready to bind. So the tags I've printed as well. This is from her set and I printed that very same at the back. More tags, it's got those spots in. I will probably just trim it off and put my own little thingies on there. And then this one also with a pocket, and little ephemera pieces that you can use. Also printed from Digi and SVG Designs. This you can't really see too clearly, even if I bring it closer to the camera. It is not going to show up well, but it is very, very light. Um, tea stained, it's on the one side, not on the other. But for these sheets that I've printed, I might be using it in the journal. It's all Christmas related, just printed on normal copy paper for the backs of the tags or whatever I want to use, glue it down on cardstock to make pockets or more tags, anything as possible at this very point in time. So without further ado, I want to start folding and obviously cutting off the tags and these ephemera pieces will happen off camera, but I want to get started with folding things and I want to show you also how to use stencils for the back. So I already folded one sheet. This is from Louise's kit, but I did not print anything on this side. So for here, I want to show you how we can stencil on here, maybe a bit of collage. And I kept this one plain so that I can show you that. Let's start folding these sheets. I just want to add her kit is enormous. There's many, many, many different pages there. So I did not print everything. Some of it has got a little bit of a more modern feel, which I don't want for this um, journal. Now, I am a bit in two minds about this. I do want the vintage, um, typical white Christmas feel, um, cold, all of that. But I live in the Northern Hemisphere, but my heart is in the Southern Hemisphere. I am South African um, by heritage and they celebrate a summer Christmas, which is all hot um, and humid and it is warm. The Northern Hemisphere has got snow and cold temperatures. So I am really in two minds about this. But one thing that I can tell you at this point, and you could tell that as well, it will be vintagey because of the type of paper that I decided to use. So for these ones, I'm going to start. That one also needs to be cut. The rest should all be folded. Um, there's a few post postcard, almost I call it postcard type legs. You can cut this and make cards from it, any type of thing. So these ones will be cut down. Um, to include as ephemera in the journal, to give journal space or the outside of little booklets, whatever. I don't know. I can't say where this is going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start folding this. Yes, the paper. I need my bone folder. I just want to grab that. Make sure that your pieces are flush. The ends should be in the corners there. And then you can hold it quite still and just burnish it. I will be trimming this a little bit to get rid of 
of those parts. Now, some of this I will be folding in. We will be adding some more paper to this as we go on. But for today, we're just going to fold the paper to get these cardstock pieces. I'll show you what I'll do with those parts just to get us going. I love getting my ephemera pieces ready before I start with my journal. Why do I do that? I am very impatient and I get very excited. I cannot wait to make ephemera once my album is done. I need to do that first so that I can include it as I'm going on and building this. So I will be starting with this for today. We fold these sheets, which are printed on 180 GSM paper, um, printed on both sides. We'll be trimming a bit off or maybe not could add some lace or trimmings or whatever to it and of course we will be adding normal coffee dyed paper in some places um, just to add interest to the journal now these ones i'm all going to just fold it in this way but we can later if we want to have this one in front do that and include it that way it's up to you how you want to have your orientation you can print the paper 2-2 on a sheet. In other words, it will be this size and then you can have a smaller journal. So it's up to you. Louise included some more modern prints, um, like real Christmas paper type feel, blues and things like that. Still with the Santa Clauses on, but you can decide what you want to use and what you want to exclude. You don't have to print everything as it is. Now, I know I'm jumping through through creators here, but there's also, if you want to see Barbara and Louise, and Barbara are actually friends. They do have a collaboration on their channels that they call the Femorember, and they work together often. Um, and Barbara from Austria, she calls herself that, Barbara from, from Austria. She is 49 Dragonflies on YouTube. Also, it's got a a video series, how to make printables your own. Now, nothing stops you from changing this. You can add ink on this and you can add paint on it. You can do stenciling on top of this. There's nothing that stops you. I just want to quickly flip through this and show you the graphics. It's amazing. These sheets, look at that. And we will have that added one. And then when you turn over, you have that there. It is just amazing. I just love it. Absolutely love it. Now these sheets, I want to just grab a few. I won't be cutting the tags from here, but I do want to work with these ones just to show you how that is going to do. Maybe one or two from here and there. I'll move this to the one side. So for this, the easiest thing is if you don't have a paper cutter yet, you can go ahead and you can use your bone, um, bone folder. Listen to me, you're not going to get any cutting done with a bone folder. My mind is all over. It is an exceptionally busy time for me. Hence why it's not the normal 12 or 15 series or weeks that I normally run with my journals. I'm going through a rough spot at this stage. Um, personal, nothing to worry about. Um, nothing life threatening. It's just overwhelming, very, very busy. And I am really running around like a headless chicken at this point in time. Now, I will be following the natural lines there, the edges that she's got, just to, to cut these parts. That one, and then for this one, you will see that it is slightly smaller because there's that little edge. So I will be using that as the cutting guideline and cut this down a tiny little bit. Um, cutting away a part of it. There we have that one. So for that, I don't want to, to keep you too long today. I want to also just cut the little ones. I'll just move this out of the way because I'll be using that in a minute. So just a strip, I'll do the rest. You can fold this, you can make a concertina folder out of it, concertina or an accordion. My South African friends will know what I'm talking about when I say concertina, an accordion. Um, these ones, I already have some. Let's do a smaller one. And I'll do this one, just because it's easy to cut with the clear lines, that is. And in, in essence, it will all be the same type of thing that I'm going to do. Yes, I'll do later. So with the paper that I have chosen at the back, it's already like that. We can add now if we have a bit of um, 
paper. I'm just thinking, do I have any vintage paper that is on my table that I can use? But you could do some book pages to do a collage, whatever it is that you want with this. So I need my vintage photo. Oh, I still need to cut these. I did not cut these little ones now. Let's start with the easy ones. That has got a clear line. It helps when it is very distinct, then it makes the cutting so much quicker. This one too, you can follow the line there. Very easy and, and it's quick, quick cutting. That doesn't take a lot of time. So in blending tools, you know me, I love my vintage photo. And as it is a vintage type like Santa Claus journal, don't know if it's just Christmassy or focus will be on Santa. At this point, I think it's more Santa than just Christmas per se. I will probably still try and look for some more pine trees to include in some way or another. Why do I ink the edges? To hide the white core. There you can see the white core. I'll bring it closer. I don't like that look. I prefer that where it is rounded off and you don't see the white core of the paper. You can ink it as dark as you want to, as light as you want to. You don't have to tap it into the ink every time that you ink. After a couple of weeks, the, the ink blending tool does dry up. You just tap it then, or if you want it darker, you can dip it into the ink pad again. And yes, I get many hours out of a ink blending pad, these little spongy thingies. They do damage over time because of the friction, constant friction of the paper against the sponge. It's much like your kitchen sponges. So we have that. I want to just paint this one and then those other two that I just cut. And where did I put those now? This side. So let's do just one of these and then we will call it a day for today. You can go ahead and cut these things. Get your pieces together that you want to use. Start working on your signatures. I will be adding some coffee dyed and tea dyed paper, maybe some small index cards. Well, I can actually say not maybe, but definitely some index cards. That was also tea dyed. I love the feel of those and it adds interest. Those can also be added as journaling spots. These can be used as pockets. If printed on normal paper, you can add it to envelopes, all kinds. You can do so much with this. And literally, there are many, many, many pages. I will go have a look for you, and I will tell you next time how many pages are in that set or that kit of Louise. It is absolutely amazing. You can go look at her stuff. She's got quite a bit, as do my friends. I call them friends because I've been using their products for so long now. Um, at uh, DG and SVG Designs, they've got all kinds of kits and ephemera pieces, labels for all kinds of occasions. Baby, Christmas, farm, all kinds. Um, I want to just maybe cut out one of these. Which one will we do? We will do this one. So remember when we fuzzy cut, we actually move our paper and don't open the blades like that actual physical cutting, cutting, cutting of opening, closing that we teach the little ones to do. You basically just push the paper through. It's small movements. It's not that deliberate cutting action. It's really a fine movement. And as I say and show you here, you move your paper and not your scissors per se. So there we have that one. The rest will be done off camera. I just want to also include the, some of the papers so you can get an idea of getting your signatures together. It can literally be anything. Um, toilets. It can be some Christmas paper from previous years that you have. So we have these parts. This will be included. You can actually punch a hole in, make a label, add a tab, put it as a pocket. You can add it on top. What's stopping you from adding that there? If you want to, you make it your own. Um, most of these digital creators only request is that you do not sell their products illegally, nor distribute it to people that did not pay for it. And the rest, you can do with it almost what you want. You can change it or alter it in any way. So let's look at some tea and coffee dyed papers to include. So some of the papers that I might include, this is like a craft paper, lighter brown, more or less a khaki type like. We can fold this in different ways. I will fold one like this. That can be included. It's a funky color, but it fits in quite nicely. This one I want to fold in a different way. I'm going to do it like this. Nothing stops you from folding your paper in a different orientation. And I'm going to fold this one maybe like this. And then we can do something 
on this side. So we will bound it there. This might be a pocket. We might cut it open so that it is a flip out this side. We don't know yet. And it's all good. We will put the signatures together later. Now this, we might, yeah, we might even include this one there. Just a tiny little bit shorter. You can attach it with washi tape or even with a strip of paper on both sides just to reinforce it. Anything is possible. So I'll just leave this for a moment. This can even be a little booklet if you fold it over. See, ideas are just flowing. Using one of those tiny ones. Where are they now? That we just cut and inked as the cover. Depending on your orientation, it can be a little booklet by itself. So I'll just leave this back for now. That one there. This can be folded. I just grabbed one of those. Should have grabbed more. But nothing stops me from going to the shelf to get more. And we can just burnish this. You don't always have to have a bone folder. You can use your pair of scissors. You can use your fingernails, glue stick. Let's do the next one with a glue stick to show you you don't have to have all the fancy things still because I still believe everybody should be able to craft and tools or the lack of tools should not stop you. Just a flat object and there we go. I'll just keep these two together and fold them over. Now, they do want to go skew now, so maybe not. Just keep it flush and there we go. These sheets can be folded lengthwise. Now, the length of this, I'll use this one just as a guide, the one that we will stencil on. If we have this, it's still short, so you can fold it lengthwise for a total different look and feel. Just, there you go. Nothing stops you. It can be maybe your menu that you write there. Anything. It literally can be anything. Now, if you're going to add it like this, the lines will not be in an upright position for you to write. So maybe we can do the same thing. I will fold this one there. This was from an old notebook where there were pages done, a few pages left, and I tore that out and used it. So you can use anything. This can be added up there, and this can be folded in half. So you will maybe cut that so that it is able to fold over and be in two pages. Something, we'll see. Old book page, love the way that it came out. Same thing, this we can totally use as a collage piece. I'll just do that. Seeing that we're doing that other one in a lengthwise portrait type like orientation. I'll fold that. I hope you can see that you can literally add anything to a journal. Stuff that you already have at home. It doesn't have to be printed paper, paper packs, that type of stuff. This is um, parchment type like paper that was coffee dyed. I love the printy sound of it. And this one might be might not, might be a tiny little bit bigger than what we have already with our paper. True music sheet that was coffee dyed or tea dyed. I think it was coffee. If I don't, in this instance, I did not color it again. If it's very light like this, I will let it dry and then stain it a second time, which is what mostly happens with this. Can you see the difference in tone? So once it's dried, I sometimes then do it again so that it's got a darker color envelope i showed you some time ago in one of my tips and tricks sessions how to do coffee dye this was left from that torn you can fix that just put a bit of tape there just to reinforce that part cardstock i'll just fold this this is a five which is half a four just hold it and let's burnish it so that it can fold properly in the middle I stained this just splashing on coffee and that is the result of this you can see there was two splashes made on this that little bit and then a second time so you can see the originals and then the second and maybe a third one on top more paper that can be cut let's do it and i'm going to just mark the middle spot for myself I'm not going to fold it per se but you can if you want and then just tear this with a ruler to get that rough edge and a big sheet can now become two where you fold it over and this one has got lines on the one side and not on the other so one we will keep like that and one we will fold in this way so once you you bind it in your notebook you've got that or your journal you go with that so the same here that one was with the lines on the outside this one we will do with the lines on the inside just for a different orientation so there you have our paper for today we will continue with getting this stands up next time and our paper so we can start with putting the signatures together so this one i will do maybe a bit of painting on the inside a bit of stenciling just with inking because if i now add liquid to this to coffee stain like splashes of coffee it will cause this to run because i do not have a laser printer mine is only an inkjet so 
I will keep that one to one side. But for this, you can start putting your signatures together. I'll just put this one one side for a moment. And let's do two signatures. I think we should feel like doing two signatures. Just an array of our stars. It's about two going. Maybe I should just turn this one around so we don't have the same type of paper. It is not the same, but the tones are the same. So let's maybe get another one, that one, and maybe this one. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what we're using. But I think we will do about two signatures. You can have the same type if that is what you want. Exactly the same type of paper in both of them. You can sort your paper evenly if you so wish. We'll do one like that. This one can go there. You don't have to have it exactly in the same spot. If you change its placement, you really make things look a whole lot different. So nothing stops you from adding bigger and smaller pieces. I would like that one in the middle though, just so that we have some strength that side. This one can go there. This one can maybe come to the outside. There. Some of this we will add at a later stage. Add these little cards that can go there. That and the envelope can be added. I kind of like the idea of adding this one. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll add it there. Just a little bit of interest. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Nothing stops us. And one on this side, maybe. One. Let's see. There. It can be any, any, any which way you want it to be. I still have these ones to add, so there's a lot of pages. Oh, I started with a signature already. No problems. We'll just add this there. So how many pages? I don't know. Normally I do about 10 sheets, so that is like 40 pages eventually. Why 40? That's one, two, three, and four. So this will be one sheet of paper. Don't worry about the order at this point. That one already got music paper as far as I know. I just want to see, but it doesn't really matter. Let's do this one the other way around. Get the music paper outside. Let's do this one this side. And this one feels a bit thicker than this one. Go to that one there. And yes, this can be folded in, so it's not a problem. It just gives for more interest. But that will then be the height of it. A little bit wider than that. And then this one will be added there. So there we have our two signatures, sort of, more or less. These ones are a bit bulky and they do pop out, but we will adjust the width of our cover to incorporate that. So we have the two signatures, which are quite thick. Together you can see there's quite a bit already, so we will have to have about a two and a half, three inch spine to then just stop that crocodile mouth from happening. And it will be gorgeous with these little pieces added in our journal. Thank you for joining me today. Go try and get some paper for yourself together and start a Christmas journal. It doesn't have to be a thick journal. It can be one signature or five sheets. It's up to you. Just try and do it. If I can just inspire one person with every video that I make to start with a creative process of whatever sort they want, I will be a very happy person because it means that somebody will find joy in crafting, starting to craft. And that is the idea of my channel, is to get the beginners to realize that they don't need the fancy tools and fancy supplies to start making journals. Previous journals, I've included things like worksheets, children's books, old books. Um, that can be old textbooks where I'm from. They have to buy their own. They normally use it and then it just gets thrown away. So any of that paper is um, something that you can incorporate in your journal. It doesn't have to be paperbacks. If you've got paperbacks, if you've got printables, by all means, use it. Anything can go. You can use old Christmas cards. I know um, people do tend to, to keep those. You can incorporate those cards in your journal, make the journal of those. Use that as your signatures as well. Beautiful graphics available all over the internet. Just try not to, to infringe copyrights when you are making your journals. If you want to see more content like this, give me a thumbs up. And as always, I'll appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel too. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload new content. And if you want to do so, you are more than welcome to share my video with your friends. See you back soon for part two of our journal. Goodbye.